All right. Hey there, Professor Grainy here, and we are wrapping up our lecture series. We have just a couple more uh, left, and today we're going to talk about speaking with visual aids or, or visual aids. <laughs> Can't speak right now or um, uh, presenting with them, all right? So utilizing your visual aids correctly. And uh, you are gonna be using this for your final speech, which is your persuasive speech. So I would recommend, um, we'll, we'll go over the, the different options, but usually some sort of PowerPoint, um, and we'll talk about what you should be kind of putting in there. All right, so here are a handful of uh, advantages to visual aids. Uh, the first is it really helps clarify what you're speaking about. Um, it just kind of gives a visual to people um, that they can wrap their head around as opposed to just trying to imagine what you're speaking about. Second, it helps keep their interest so that they don't get bored um, and it keeps them kind of looking at something um, as well as also listening uh, to you. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, it helps them retain information which Again, hearing it audibly and then also seeing it visually helps people go, ah, clicks. Uh, and it just, they can remember it for, you know, days, weeks, years to come because of that. It helps with your credibility so it doesn't look like you're making up information. You actually have charts and graphs and photos to really back up what you're speaking about. And finally, it helps with persuasiveness. That's the reason we are doing it and utilizing them for our persuasive speeches. So here are a handful of different visual aids that you technically could use. Um, again, if you can't see my screen, make sure that you have our PowerPoint up or printed out um, and in front of you. Objects and models, photos and drawing, graphs, charts, video, and PowerPoint. So let's go over each one. Um, <coughs> excuse me, there's a tickle in my throat. Uh, photos and drawings enlarge for audience to see. Um, well, we're not going to pass them <laughs> because we're doing our class via uh, online and Zoom. Uh, but if you were in a live setting, I always advise don't pass things around. It's just too distracting for people. And I recommend displaying with some sort of PowerPoint um, or really professional uh, thing. I wouldn't, flip charts are great. I mean, they're kind of old school, but uh, we're really moving forward technology wise. So try to find something in that arena. So with photos and drawing, what this says is, this is what a person with dyslexia might see when reading this sentence, i.e. don't put a lot of words on your PowerPoint. And for our PowerPoint that you're gonna be utilizing for your persuasive speech, I actually want zero words on it, um, unless it has a chart or a graph. So this is not the time that you're gonna put your main points or bullet points on here. That's not what this is used for. This is to literally aid you in your presentation, right? It should not become your presentation, but rather just enhance what you are uh, saying, okay? Graphs, I love graphs, graphs are fantastic. These show statistical trends and patterns. Again, really enhancing what you're talking about and giving someone something to kind of wrap their head around. The first kind of graph is a line graph. I'm sure you're familiar with all of these, but just as a reminder, this is using one or more lines to show some sort of change over time, okay? That's what one looks like. Again, hopefully I got so much light coming in here probably really nearly impossible to see that, um, but it's showing food, health care over the course of over 30 years and how that differs. Just putting, wrapping your head around something. If you just said these numbers without visually showing it, your audience would go, I have no idea what you're talking about. Okay. Pie graph. Highlight segments of, circle, of a circle to show a distribution pattern. So think big circle and things are kind of segmented off like a nice pie. And uh, yeah, this is what it looks like. Again, on your paper, if you look to that, this talks about women in the workforce over the course of a century and how that differs. And you can see single is 68% in 1900, whereas over, you know, in 2010, it turned to, or went down rather, to 28%. Um, and again, that number would be kind of hard to really think about if they weren't visually seeing it while you were speaking, okay? And a bar graph 
uses vertical or horizontal bars to show a comparison, and this is what that looks like. Okay. Uh, one thing I want to note here is it's important on your actual visual aid to show us the specific number. So, for example, median household income $34,218 is what you see there, but what you actually speak should be just over 34,000. That's how I want you to say it, not the actual number. Otherwise, your audience is gonna go, they just said a bunch of numbers that I can't even recall. So put the exact number on here, give the roundabout number or percentage uh, vocally, okay? Charts, these are also fantastic. I'm a big fan of charts. These summarize large blocks of info, usually some sort of list, really simplified, easy to read, easy to see. Okay, and again, something like that. Keep it simple, keep it simple. Charts help listeners visualize info. They show some sort of step, all right? Again, I reiterate here, keep it simple, keep it clear, keep it easy to see, concise. All right, some people ask, can I show a video? Technically, yes, but I really want you to be technologically savvy if you're going to show this. Um, it has to be pretty short, so 15 to 30 seconds, no longer, um, and it shouldn't be cutting into your speaking time. So for this persuasive speech, you have five to seven minutes to speak, which means I don't want you speaking for four and a half and then showing a 30 second video and thinking you hit your time because you're still coming in under time. Um, so keep that in mind all right, and take that into account. But if you are pretty technologically savvy, you found a video that just is so fantastic that you have to show that 20 seconds. If you know how to embed it into your PowerPoint where it just plays automatically, fantastic. If you have no idea what that word even means, I'd probably nix the idea of utilizing a video. All right, and with PowerPoint, uh, this is combining audio-visual material. And again, that's where I'd like you to be as far as presenting your information. Use your strategically um, enhanced uh, specific points. Don't overpower it. Don't read from it. You're not gonna be doing that because I don't want words on it. I really want you focusing on us here, the audience, and this should just be um, in the background. And just FYI, think about the lighting um, in your house and although you want to be lit um, work on making sure that we can see this too um, or if we're doing a zoom call maybe share your screen temporarily uh, that would also be a really beneficial thing that way we can see it and then it comes back to you um, so maybe practice with that and see how that can can play out for you couple more things so when preparing your visual aids do them in advance. Do not do this the night before and just try to wing it. It's gonna look like you, you winged it, okay? So really practice with it. Uh, write the outline, practice with the outline, get those to note cards, and have your visual aid ready. Keep it simple, make large enough uh, to see and limit. Again, the amount of text, I just want that to be none unless there's a chart or a graph of some sort, um, but your pictures should be big. Use fonts and colors effectively. This is not for our presentations, but for future use, just maybe uh, pan through some of these slides just to kind of help you in other presentations and other classes. It's just nice advice for you. I'm just gonna look through that. Okay, keep it simple. Be professional, it's a big thing. When you are using images, which I'm assuming many of you will, be smart about this. Find ones that are high resolution. When you're Google imaging, uh, doing a search on this, couple things to do. <laughs> you can actually change your advanced settings to make it so that um, you only have a high resolution picture show up. So any high resolution is like a thousand by a thousand or more. And anything lower than that is pretty teeny tiny. And so you want to keep it, uh, you don't want to pick those. If you're going I have no idea what that even setting means. I didn't even know what resolution was. Um, you can also find it in the corner of the photos on Google. Okay, so the bottom right hand corner, I believe, has that number and it says 1200 by 1400. That's the resolution. So again, higher, bigger, better, smaller means it's not gonna look so good on the screen. Um, finally, if you still have no idea what I'm talking about, click on the image and when it opens up in a new, um, 
screen, like a thumbnail, if it's tiny and small and you feel like you have to stretch it out to put it on your PowerPoint, don't use it. If it's big and you almost have to shrink it down to fit, great, that means it's a high resolution. All right, so there's a little tidbit for you. Um, I think you can kind of see this a little bit. This is low resolution. I think when I pulled it, it was about three by 300 by 400 and I had to stretch it out and it looks really blurry. It's not great. High resolution, much more beautiful, vivid, bright, amazing colors. So things like that. Presenting visual aids, display it where we can see it. Um, again, you're not passing here. One thing is display only while discussing. And I know it's a unique situation because we'll be doing our presentations via Zoom. So again, I think maybe the best course of action is just to share screen for a moment, show the visual aid, go away from it, um, and come back to you. Uh, otherwise, I always recommend putting a blank black slide in between each slide. So you'll start with a black slide, have a picture, black slide, graph, black slide, chart, black slide, something of that nature. Um, that way, when you're speaking, you click to it, the audience focuses back on you rather than staring at what you have up on your screen. Talk for the audience, not the visual aid. So really practice with it. Know what's behind you and look to us. And save it as a .ppt. Uh, we're not presenting in a classroom setting, so I'm not overly concerned with this. Just make sure you have it up and ready and, and ready to go. Uh, otherwise, the reason I say .ppt is because some computers are pretty old school and don't have the capability to open up a .pptx or an Apple version of this, um, which is Keynote. Uh, so just always kind of, I say, save it in the old school version so that we don't have any issues. Um, and I always recommend not only emailing it to yourself, but having it on a flash drive. That's a really good investment to have. And having it on that flash drive, you can just plug it in, it's there, it's saved. We're not taking time logging in. That can be really time consuming. So just a couple of uh, pieces of advice for future presentations that you may be having. Um, for this speech, one last thing I wanna mention. Usually I have students give, uh, have visual aids that have at least three um, photos, graphs, charts, three slides essentially. But because we'll be doing these via Zoom, I think it's gonna be a little bit more difficult. So my requirement would just be to have one or two slides um, that you're gonna showcase, all right? Uh, again, please let me know if you have any questions, send me an email. Otherwise, I will see you on our next lecture.